Now, as we turn to the markets, Leighton, catfish producers seem to be happy with the way that uh, catfish prices are headed. Lots of smiles in uh, that sector. We'll be looking at the latest processing report that came out Monday the 22nd. Also ahead, record numbers of cattle are placed on feed. Traders in the corn pit say they are worried about supplies over the next year. While it appears most southeast cotton could avoid any damage from incoming Hurricane Irene. U.S. catfish prices are still up and continuing to rise according to the monthly snapshot of this industry released Monday afternoon. The average pond bank price being paid to U.S. producers in July was $1.25 per pound. That is up two cents per pound from June and an increase of 46 cents per pound compared to only one year ago. Farm sales totaled just over 26 and one half million pounds round weight, down 32 percent from the same time a year ago. Processor sales were closing in on 13 million pounds, a decrease of 29 percent from July 2010. Well, we switch gears a little bit from aquaculture to the beef sector now to check out this month's cattle on feed report. The numbers show a record amount of cattle in the United States placed on feed for the month of July. Extension Ag economist John Michael Riley has looked over the report and he answered some questions on Thursday morning. So John Michael, how many cattle does it take to make a record placement for July? Uh, it's it, 2.1 million head, uh, almost a little, a little higher than that in terms of the, the placements in July, up, uh, up, you know, well above what what was expected. Still within the, the range of expectations, but but much higher than than we were looking for. The highest the highest placement numbers on record since the series began in 1996. Uh, if you, we typically talk about these numbers in year over year, but if you look at how, they, how it compared to, to June placements, up 28%. I think what we're seeing here is an is a earlier push of, of summer cattle into feedlots due to the drought conditions that we've spoken of in, in the past. feel like a broken record here. But we saw this take place in the spring. You know, pat, cattle coming off a of wheat pasture were, were pushed into feedlots a little earlier in March and April as opposed to the typical May and June. So I think we're seeing that again at this point in the year. We're seeing these cattle come into feedlots a little earlier because they're just running out of forage. They're running out of supplemental uh, of feeds and, and whatnot. So in the months to come, are we likely to continue to see this trend of pushing cattle ahead like we've seen in these months to the behind us? Well, if we look back at what happened in the spring, the push came and then, and then uh, the numbers in, in May and June uh, kind of leveled off a little bit. were a little lower than expected. Are, are typical. Uh, we're probably going to see that again. You know, we typically uh, have, a, have our largest placements of the year in October. I think we're probably going to see leveling off as we move into the fall because there's been so many cattle pushed in the feedlots earlier. Uh, but again, as, as drought conditions continue to progress, you know, people might have to continue to liquidate, which could keep uh, cattle going in the feedlots. And obviously this trend, the herd is declining. So what does that mean for prices as we approach the last quarter of the year. Well, all the signs still point to, to you know steady to higher prices due to the fact that we are in a, a tight supply situation. Unfortunately, there's there's you know another side of the equation: demand. The economy continues to not struggle, but just you know it's, it's up and down in, in, in the general economy, which which is probably going to weigh on demand as we continue forward and could likely uh, you know keep a ceiling on prices. But retail prices uh, for the moment are probably going to go higher. Well, right? it's it's likely expected. Well, the subject is cotton for this edition of the Trivia Quiz on Farm Week. Here's the question for this week. What is the top cotton producing state? Is it Texas, California, Mississippi, or Georgia? You'll find out before our feature story. Some private forecasters are reportedly estimating a national corn yield below 150. And let's say this idea may gain some traction in the next couple of weeks ahead of the upcoming September crop report. Jamie Kohaki advises that once a producer works up his input numbers and knows his profit potential, it may be time to look at making some 2012 corn sales. This red D's, I would look at, you know, 660, 680. Uh, I think there's still potential for more upside there, just based off, I think, final yields probably coming in in the low 150s, brings the total crop size 12.7, 12.8, and we're still in a very, very I, uh, same situation close to last year. So I think 660 is a good price to start at there for the, for the red D's. AgFacts.com is reporting that cotton defoliation has started on a widely scattered basis in the South Delta. Meanwhile, to the east, it appears now the projected path of Hurricane Irene will not bring much risk of damaging rains and wind over the cotton crop in Georgia and South Carolina. 
In the markets this morning, Thursday morning, cotton futures traded sharply lower after the USDA reported heavy weekly cancellations of U.S. export sales. And on top of that, the Census Bureau said that domestic mill use of cotton fell last month. Analyst Jamie Kohaki, Kohaki says there has been more fund activity in not only the cotton market, but other row crop commodities as well. I don't know how long it's going to last. This weak dollar, too, is starting to help out again as well. But with this whole entire grain complex, cotton as well, oats, we have to export the crop. And right now, I think we're at levels where they're going to start backing off. So that's why I'm more into uh, you know, uh, putting a floor underneath this thing. The only mill in the United States using poplar and sweet gum trees to make chopsticks opened earlier this summer. Georgia Chopsticks in Americus, Georgia, says it will turn out 2 million chopsticks a day, but the capacity will be growing up to 10 million a day by the end of this year. The new wood product for the United States is, as you might guess, being exported to China, Japan, and Korea. Well, before our feature story, here's our answer to the trivia quiz for this week. The right choice is A. Texas grows the most cotton of all the states. They account for about one half of all cotton acres in this country.